doing tonight? <laughs> Emeril Lagasse here. Welcome to Emeril Live. Hey, you know, uh, there's a big craze going on. I'm not probably telling you anything you don't know about this whole low-carb eating stuff, right? I mean, it's on fire right now. Jeez. Anyhow, just because you're on a low-carb eating plan doesn't mean that you've got to be stuck with an all-meat menu, because that's sort of what the way they're directing everyone out there. I've got a menu for you tonight that's not only low in carbs, but it's high in flavor, and you won't miss a thing. You know what I mean? Hey, speaking about good flavors, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the other guy. Oh, yeah. It's low carb and high flavor tonight on Emerald Live. Big show for you tonight. Got some really great, creative, low-carb dishes that I put together. And I hope you enjoy them. They got some incredible flavors. Let me show you real quick what we're going to uh, low-carb cook tonight, shall we? I got a little teriyaki pork tenderloin. And I'm going to show you. It's all in the marinating. All in the marinating. Pork tenderloins. Then an unbelievable taco made with ikama and tuna. Delicious. And then, of course, we're going to go to the back roads here of Louisiana for a little Cajun turkey sausage, baby. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to show you uh, an unbelievable marinated flank steak. Like I said, it's all in the marination. So uh, let's get started. What do you think of the new digs here, huh? Pork tenderloins. Ah, most people, they don't know what to do with them. They go in the store. Got to wash the old hands first, you know. <laughs> you, know you know, we got all kinds of police here. Soap police, water police, you know, paper towel police. <laughs> so, they generally, when they're packaged in the grocery store, they usually come two tenderloins. So, is, this is like the filet mignon of pork, basically, is what it is. And um, don't have a lot of fat on them. Whatever fat is on there, you want to trim them off. Trim them up real good. Then it's in the seasoning here in the marinade. So let me show you. We're going to get started here. First thing, I have soy sauce. The low salt kind, right? Then I have a little rice wine vinegar. And I have a little sesame. Then... A little allspice, you know, that can that you have in the pantry. <laughs> You've had there for, what, six, seven years the last time you used it? <laughs> so we're going to have a little fresh ginger. And then, of course, we're going to have a little bit of garlic in here as well, okay? <laughs> So I, uh, I've got it in this kind of thing to, uh, to sort of, you know, get all the flavors together first and also make it easier. Then what you do is we're going to take a little essence. You can use whatever essence you want, Southwest, Asian. We're going to season it up. And I like to season both sides because it just absolutely, even if it's low carb, just absolutely just drives me crazy to have one-sided taste in food. <laughs> so we have the essence. Now, that wasn't so difficult. You get one of these nice little zip bags, and you put the old tenderloins in here. And then you take this marinade inside of the bag. 
come on, that wasn't so difficult. And then what you do now, just sort of let the ma meat marinate in this wonderful sort of little Asian flavors, if you will. We'll put it in the ice box. One to three hours, preferably, is a uh, good marinating time. I like to do mine overnight. Overnight is great. Gets really good marinated with this thing here. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Stick around. Doc is. <laughs> cooking low-carb, high-flavor food here tonight. <laughs> okay, anyhow. You want to marinate those uh, tenderloins in the bag. And uh, once you get them marinated for a few hours, we take them out. I like to then show you a little trick. Now, we want to start searing these things. So I've got my skillet here. And uh, I want to get it on medium-high, even-high start getting some really good heat into that thing. And then what I want to do is I want to rescue the tenderloins here. But you're going to sear them, and we're going to use a little oil. So what you need to do is you've got to kind of pat dry these things a little bit. You know what I mean? Water, oil, no. Nah. Doesn't go. How's... uh? Your low cob thing working out there, Doc. Very good, man. Good. Well, there's a couple of new dishes for you. Great. Give you the recipes later. So we want to pat them dry. All right, one is patted dry now. So we'll get uh, this one in the uh, in the box. Oh yeah, babe. <laughs> see, we really cook on this show. You see? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just. So now we have two of them patted dry. See, and it, see how they colored like that? They just, but you gotta have a little oil in here, okay? Save this, oh yes, save it. Yummy, yummy, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> save it, we're gonna cook it. Put that over there. Now, let's get a little oil in the pan. Gotta have a little, little oil in here to kind of get things going. And then we'll wash our tongues. So, uh, you know, raw, cooked, you know what I mean? Oh, we're a first-class show here, let me tell you. So now we got this sear in here. And then what I do, I want to get these things once they're seared around in the oven. Now, this is when the investment of a thermometer really, really comes in handy. And I've told you that before, because we want to take this pork tenderloin out. In the big side, we're going to check. Not the little side. The big side, we're going to check. We want it at about 140. Here's my theory. At a brown around the neighborhood of about 135, 138. <laughs> now, the police won't tell you that. We want to take the tenderloin out because the meat should rest. If it doesn't rest... As soon as we take it out of the oven, we cut it. All the juices just run away. You let it rest. Theory. 139, 140, 140. I think it's going to continue to climb a little bit. But that's just my theory. 140 is where we want to go. So once we have that in the oven, and I have some in there, because the amazing Food Network kitchen is behind me. You can't see them, but they are. Now, let me show you this. In a little olive oil, watch this, Doc. In another skillet, just a little tiny bit of olive oil. 
I've got some Napa cabbage, wow. right? Mm. Big deal. <laughs> I've got some mushrooms. I happen to have shiitakes today. Then I have some cucumbers. God knows we're always looking for something to do with cucumbers. <laughs> so I have them. I happen to love bean sprouts. You can get fresh. It's amazing. You see all those nice markets down there, huh? Beautiful. And then I have a little bit of green onion. I have some snow peas. See, that's what's great about having like nice. a produce thing downstairs. You go down there and go nuts. I mean, before it used to be, you know, one thing, carrots, maybe a little celery. Now look, can't even get it all in the skillet. <laughs> so, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the vegetables and we're gonna add a little salt. And a um, little pepper. Yes, a little pepper. Fresh ground. Okay, fresh pepper. Beautiful. Now you can really add whatever you want. Okay, so I got the cabbage here, Doc. Just slightly going to warm it like this. Don't try this at home. <laughs> then I have some spinach. Okay? And now watch this, Doc. I got some spinach like this. And uh, I'm going to add some fresh parsley or whatever herbs you like. And then, 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 that liquid, right, it's going to cook. So we're just going to add that in here like that. Okay, Doc? Just real simple. Now, it's cooking. We go to the oven. 140 degrees. For these pork tenderloins, you should smell them. Oh, oh man. man. Incredible. Has this, you know, the soy sauce and the, oh. All right, so we're gonna let it rest. Make sure the board is clean. <laughs> God knows they're looking in your window. <laughs> now, after it rests, Then what we're gonna do now, this is nice and slightly warm. You don't wanna overcook it. We're gonna have a little bed of these vegetables here, Doc. Okay? Then, the rested pork tenderloin, we're just gonna cut. Maybe like half inch. Let's see, is my theory right? Yes. Oh. It's perfect. <laughs> so now what you can do is take this delicious pork tenderloin around, around and around and around. Doesn't that look great? Oh, around and around and around. Round, round, round. And then I take my piece Set it just like that on top, okay? And a little peanuts like this. Some peanuts. And a little garnish. Oh yeah, babe, and there you have it. There's the first low carb dish. Low carb. So I'm gonna take this uh, onion couple of these tomatoes, a little bit of oil, some essence, and I'm just gonna put them on the grill. A little more essence. The whole point of what I'm gonna do here is I wanna char this. Another little cooking secret, charred. A little different flavor. Because I'm gonna take that and make a charred pico de gallo. Are you with me on that? Yeah. All right, I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. Don't even think about touching that dial. Back in. I 
Kicking up the cobs a few notches tonight. We got a little uh, pork tenderloin out there with a little just simple uh, bean sprout and a little Savoy cabbage. Napa cabbage is another name. Go ahead, dig in, ladies. It's so light, you'll be floating out of here. <laughs> I uh, ended up by um, putting the onions to get charred and the tomatoes. You see, they should stop blistering like that. You see the skin's blistering? And it gets this little smoky flavor going on, too, because... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and make a little pico de gallo with that. Okay? Oh, yeah. Now, what I find doing this sort of cooking, it's all about flavor. You know, it's all about just packing the flavor in there. So I took a little uh, allspice, cayenne, and cumin. Okay? So now I went from sort of an Asian flavor, now I've got sort of like a little southwestern thing going on here, right now. And I'm going to uh, use that as a spice, as a seasoning to flavor. And what I'm going to flavor is some tuna. Like I said, beautiful thing being here in the market, right? Just go downstairs. Hey, Joe, what you got? Emerald. I happen to get some fresh tuna. Okay, I'll take it. This is a little yellow fin tuna, beautiful eye. Okay, nice. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut a few steaks of the tuna. See? Got to have the right knife for the job. This is kind of a little shorty. That's okay. So what we're going to do is cut a few steaks like this. And then what we're going to do is take our spice mixture and we're going to season them. <laughs> then... I've got this large skillet on the stove. You could do it on the grill, too. No big deal. If you want to grill it, not going to hurt my feelings. We'll save that. Now, what we're going to do is just take them and just sort of put them right in the skillet. Turn the heat on. And I'm looking sort of for that, um, I think, rare to medium rare for this. What I'm going to do is make a taco. So I've got the tuna that's on. <laughs> hey, when we come back, tuna tacos with Pico de Gallo. Stick around. We'll be right back. some low cob pie flavor tonight. Hey, didn't that sound fantastic, huh? Yeah. We got the amazing Cliff on keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, nice. 
And we got Lewis on the horns. Sir Charles on bass. Mr. Teddy on the drums. Thank you. Thank you. And from the brotherly love city in the world, Doc Gibbs from Philadelphia. All right, we got a lot going on here, so uh, here we go. Charred tomatoes, charred onions, dice them up. Now I want to season them with a little salt and, of course, a little pepper. Had to fill it up, you know? It's getting a little empty. Now, we're going to add to this the juice of one lime, some cilantro, also called coriander. We're going to add just a tiny bit of jalapeno pepper in here. And uh, got to have a little bit of garlic. Doesn't have to be very fancy. There you have it, a good charred pico de gallo. Now, we're going to take uh, uh, one of the tuna steaks off the grill. And uh, first, we're just going to cut. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Nice, medium rare. So we're going to cut a little bit of the tuna here and uh, dice it a little bit more. Now, one of my favorite things I've been using for years, I absolutely love this in relishes, all different kinds of things. Uh, this is here. It's called ikama. It's with a J, but it's really ikama, how it's pronounced. And it's kind of sweet. Uh, it has a texture like pear, if you will, okay? Not as sweet as pear, but it's really delicious. It's supposed to be good for you and all that stuff. It's, you know, anyhow. So what I did was I just took the bottom of the ikema and the top of the ikema. I'll show you what it looks like. It's white inside. you got to peel this brown skin off. But what I did is I peeled it, and I really, really thin with, it, with my knife just kind of did like the little slices. You with me right there? So, and you can do it on a mandolin too, if you have that. So the point is, what we're gonna do now is make a taco real quick. I have guacamole. And those of you, many, many of you have done that www.oskemerald.com thing, but well, it's actually foodnetwork.com, and then pfft, over to the Emerald page, but why your guacamole gets discolored. Well, a couple of things that you can do. One, you could add a little sour cream to it. That will help it. The enzyme in sour cream will keep it fresh. Two, like I have right here, see? When you get the, uh, the, the pit, the seed out of it, just keep it in. See how fresh it's looking there? That's another thing you can do, okay? Or a lot of acidity, like lime juice or lemon juice also works, okay? Now, I take one of my little thin pieces of ikema. And basically what I do is I just pat it dry. And then I take that. And then I take my tuna. Right inside here. Then I take the pico de gallo that we made. Charred pico de gallo. Okay. And then a little bit of guacamole. And there you have an unbelievable taco made with tuna and ikema, just like that, you see? <laughs> nice, huh? Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yum. So you just kind of roll it up like that and then uh, take a bite and then you can share with 80 million people <laughs> what you think. So that's the tuna taco with uh, the ikema. We're going to make some more of those up here in a few minutes. Take this tuner out so it doesn't get overcooked. Now, here's one of the big questions. When I told folks that we were going to do this low-carb, high-flavor food, they said, you know, the problem is, is uh, what do you do at breakfast? You know, breakfast seems to be a problem area. Huh, no problem. <laughs> get this ground, ground turkey meat, right? And... Uh, the leaner, the better. You know, you can go to the store. They got, what's it, 7%. Then there's, you know, 10%, 40 whatever. Or you can go downstairs or go to one of your butchers and just get it as lean as you can. This is basically all breast meat, so it's very, very, very lean. To that, I'm going to add some 
ground pecans, some onion. Then I'm going to flavor it. I was telling about all these flavors with some different herbs. I'm going to use a little bit of sage, and that goes a long way, sage. It's like dill. That even goes a longer way. Whew. <laughs> Try that sometime. Want to frighten some people on a subway? <laughs> Bring a bunch of dill. <laughs> Sounded good, anyhow. Then I got a little bit of thyme and a little rosemary. Then I got chipotle peppers. You know, the smoked jalapeno. Oh, they're good and spicy, chopped up for a little heat. Cumin, garlic, and a little bit of oregano. Okay? So we got all kinds of flavor going in there. We're going to add just a tiny bit of salt. <laughs> then we're going to go in there and mix all of that up and form these little Cajun, or call them what you want, turkey burgers. So if you want to have them for lunch, great. But I'm going to make them actually into a little breakfast dish. So here's what we're going to do. I got the burgers made. It says on uh, most of those uh, cob things that you can have eggs. <laughs> got a few eggs. Got some asparagus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the asparagus first. And uh, I've got a little bit of chicken stock. Also very, very low in sodium and fat. And I want to blanch these until they're, you know, a little tender. And then I'm going to take them out. They'll have a little flavor with the chicken stock. I'm going to cut the tips off for garnish. Then I'm going to take the rest of the uh, asparagus, cut them up a little bit more, and I'm going to make a little asparagus sauce, okay? Because where I'm going with this dish is that um, I've got these lean turkey burgers, and we're going to start pan searing those. And I've got asparagus that I'm going to make an asparagus sauce, and uh, I'm going to do some eggs. So we'll have some eggs with turkey burgers and an asparagus sauce. When we come back, stick around. Got you. Welcome back. Emma Lagasse here, really cooking up tonight. You know, when in doubt, you know, I'm searing these. I don't want to get a lot of fat in here. And there's not a lot of fat in here. That's why I'm getting a lot of color, you know? Because it's, it's just like really direct. It's like putting your hand right in the pan, you know? It's the same thing. <laughs> really. So uh, when in doubt, just use the oven. You know, want to be sure that the insides of those things are going to cook. While you were doing whatever you were doing, at home, <laughs> everybody here was making asparagus sauce with me, listening to Doc Gibbs and the band. <laughs> and you said asparagus sauce? Yes. So we took the asparagus out. They were fork tender. We uh, cut the tips off the asparagus. We're going to save these for something else. Cut up the other asparagus, put them back in the chicken stock. Little salt and pepper. Honest, that's all I did. Turkey burgers are in the oil oven. And so now what we're going to do, real simple, once this sort of gets tender, we'll make a quick sauce out of this. And uh, how I do it is just take the asparagus inside of a blender. If you have an immersion blender, that would be a handheld, better known as the boat motor. You could use that. See, we just moved, so we don't know where the boat motor is. <laughs> it's somewhere back there. So, um, well, listen, folks, when you're blending stuff that's hot, you know, whether you're going to make uh, 
sorbet or you whatever. You got to be very careful because hot things expand. So what I do is this. I just add a tiny bit of the stock first. Okay, just a little bit to get it going. Put this off to the side. And then uh, the top of the blender here, I just kind of let... You know, I don't want to have it all the way down because I'm trapping the heat in here, right? And then I always go kind of slow first before I put the Mamma Jammer on it. That would be the Mamma Jammer. See? Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay, so I think you get the point here. Now, come on, baby. Now, what I do? Oh, there's all kinds of things in here. Oh, yeah. Who would have known you would have found a rubber in here, right? That's what really happens when you really cook on a real cooking show. That's all I can say. I told you we just moved. All right, I'm taking out the old iron thing here. God, is there anything else in there? A couple of snails, maybe. So I think you got the point here. I'm putting the asparagus back in here. Doc, you can't make this stuff up. You know? I, I know. <laughs> And you know what? We've never been nominated for an Emmy Award either, you know? <laughs> but anyhow, I know, isn't that a shame? Now, oh, give me a break. <laughs> now, we got the sauce going on. I gotta get serious here now, please. I'm under a lot of pressure. All right, here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take a little butter, because they say you can have that on this thing. And we'll put a little butter in here. Mm -hmm. Little, little butter, whole butter like that. You know, if you're gonna cook with butter like this and you're worried that the pan's too hot, you can always cut it with a little bit of oil like this. You see, in the half oil, half butter, it brings up the smoking point so it doesn't burn. Make sense? All right, so now I thought we would do a couple of fried eggs here. Why not? Oops, that one's for you, Doc. All right. <laughs> All right, so we've got some eggs going on now. Nice, nice, gonna be beautiful. The asparagus sauce, I think we're ready to finish this thing so we can move on. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> this thing is ruining my career. All right, so here's how uh, I see it, Doc. Oh, oh, oh. Got the eggs going on, we gotta season them. Give us a oh, it's coming. <laughs> All right, so, Doc, I'm going to use one of these uh, sort of wooden spatula things here now. All right, flip them over. Over easy? Over right. easy, babe. All right, let's put this one over. Beautiful. All right, so, here's how we're going to finish this here, folks. Very, very simple. Uh, see, I think that we should just take, since it's breakfast, we'll take one of these great turkey burgers on the old plate there. And then uh, we should just take a little bit of that healthy asparagus sauce. Oh yeah, babe. See, Doc, it's really, really light, but it's got a lot, a lot of incredible flavor. Nice. And then what we'll do is we'll just take one of these uh, over easy things. Come on, baby. Come on. Right over like that, Doc. And then we can just take a couple of these asparagus tips that we had there and uh, a little of this and a little of that. A little of that, this, this, this. And uh, a little bit of that. And then there you have it. It's very simple like that, folks. A little burger like this. All right. I uh, was downstairs in the old butcher, and uh, hey, it's unbelievable how flank steak, better known also as London broil. See, when I was growing up, it was London broil. We didn't know what flank steak was. 
Then somewhere along the line, they changed the word. Then it was flank steak. And I got lost along the word there. And I got to tell you, my feelings were a little hurt, okay, when you change the word. But anyhow, so... I'm going to do one of those bag things again, okay? Flank steak, salt, pepper, Creole mustard, red wine vinegar. Oh, yeah, babe. Soy sauce again. We're going over there again. A little oil. I'm going to put it in the bag. We're going to let it marinate a little bit, okay? Then, when we're ready and it's marinated, we're going to start grilling it. When it's grilled, I'm going to show you this terrific, wild and exotic mushroom ragu when we come back. Stick around, Dr. <laughs> Flag steak. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse here doing a little uh, kicked up cooking with cobs. And uh, put it in the ice box. That would be in the refrigerator. And uh, you want it in there. I like mine overnight. You uh, take it out. Well, we'll get there. Now, I told you about this mushroom ragu. I got some regular olive oil here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. I cut up just now some, some button mushrooms. And um, I have some chanterelle mushrooms, golden chanterelles. And then I took some portobellos, the steak of the mushroom, and I put that in there. And uh, now what you got to do is you got to season them because, you know, where you get your mushrooms, they don't come seasoned. <laughs> so we got those cooking right now. We're going to hit them with a little, oh, yeah, fresh ground pepper. A lot of fresh ground pepper, you know. Now, once that happens, we're going to add some onion in here, a little onion. And then we're just going to sort of lightly coat them like this and start cooking them down. Now we want to get the flavor going in there, so we're going to add some garlic in here. Oh, yeah, babe. A little bit of thyme. Now, I've got red wine vinegar, I've got a little bit of soy sauce, and I've got a little rice wine vinegar, which I wish you could smell this at home because it smells unbelievable. So now I got this ragu going here. And then just to cap it off, what I'm gonna do is start smothering it in a little bit of tomatoes like this now, okay? Oh yeah, come on, this is a real show here. Now, back to uh, what we were talking about. So it's the next day, and you'd get your flank steak. And uh, you get your flank steak here. And then what you want to do is either on a grill. You can also do this uh, in a skillet on the stove. If you're going to do it in a skillet, pat it dry. But it's got all of this delicious marinating flavor going on right now. You see that, that we did there? You can discard that. Now, let's talk about one more component for this great dish. Sometimes I get in the mood for a little herb salad. I got some cilantro and parsley and basil. I got a little bit of marjoram, chives, not too many harsh herbs. And then what I do is I take a little bit of lemon juice, okay, and a little olive oil, just a little bit. Then a little salt. And then again, a little pepper. And we just kind of toss this a little bit. Now, when the flank steak is grilling again the theory of 140 you want to take it off sort of let it rest a little bit okay before you cut it again like I said if we cut it right now the juices just run wild the other thing is with flank steak you see how we got these grains here okay you don't want to cut with the grains 
You want to cut against the grain, and that will make it even a little bit more tender. Okay, so when I want to finish this deal, quite simply what I do is I take this delicious mushroom ragu here, a little bit of that on here with the tomato and the stock, and then what I do is I just take a few slices on an angle of the flank steak. See, perfectly cooked. That looks like a good portion. And I just layer the flank steak right over that mushroom ragu like this. And then I just take a little bit of the herb salad, just like this here. And uh, there you have it, another low carb wonder. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, let me tell you. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you next time.